Hey everyone, you're here sewing with Cody and Pete, and right now I'm just finishing up a quilt project that I started, and I am quilting in the hoop, one of my favorite things to do, because um, you're able to get some really cool custom quilting, um, but with the embroidery machine, and we're using the new 8.5 by 8.5 medium clamp hoop. So let's look and see what I'm working on tonight. So here I've got that new 8.5 8.5 medium clamp hoop and I'm working with a quilting one of the Amanda Murphy quilting designs and I am just quilting in these five inch squares so it's a simple quilt it's just a charm pack and some solid prints um, just put a so I uh, sewed them together put some borders and some sashings um, it's just a great way for me to display samples in the shop showing the line of fabric without spending tons of time um, doing elaborate piecing but tonight, all I'm showing you is what I'm working on. And what I'm doing is I'm actually quilting in the hoop. So you can just watch me and see what I'm working on. And I'll show you more detail of what I'm doing in the next box. So I've already got this one started and I'll show you the hoop. So you can see it quilts this five inch, well it's actually five inch square, so four and a half by four and a half inch square really quickly. It does an excellent job of doing it. So it doesn't take but about a minute or so for each little block, if that. Um, so you saw how it finished quilting. So now I'm gonna show you how we progress and what we do to move on to the next one. So we've got these clips. So the medium hoop, which you'll see, cause I, um, I'll show you what the hoop looks like. Actually, I'll probably put a picture up on the screen. But as you can see, it's just a simple square. It's an eight and a half, eight and a half square hoop. And it has these clips. There's 12 of them. There's three for each side. You don't, I find, you don't have to use all 12, especially when you're working with a smaller design inside the square. Now, if I was doing something much larger that came close to the edges um, of my eight and a half, eight and a half, eight and a half inch hoop, then yeah, I'd probably use more. But for what I'm working with, it's perfectly fine. So I just finished this little square. You can see the little design up here. So I can take off, I'll take off this bottom one, slide what come, it comes with this really nice um, eighth of an inch grid template. And it fits inside the hoop perfectly. And just you always have to make sure it has Bernina's name on it. So you wanna make sure when you put it in there that it's the right sides, or I'm sorry, the right side. So it's in the right position. So you always want Bernina in the bottom right hand corner of your hoop. So what I can do, I can sit that in there, take these clips off, and then I can actually just move the quilt over. And so the hoop just stays attached to the machine. So I'm working on this next block and I am doing every block. I'm probably a little crazy um, for such a simple quilt, but I'm gonna do every block because it goes so quickly. So what I'm doing is I am just make, lining up my seams on my quilt with the grid marks. I'm not worried about getting it perfect in the center or anything like that, but you definitely can. And so the grid, let me actually take it off so you can see it. But you can see the grid here, and it may be kind of difficult to see, but you can see it's got squares. So there's a one inch, a two inch, a three inch, a four inch, a five inch. So if you're trying to line up a square, you can easily find the center and line it up perfectly, and then just take the center of our design and plop it directly in the center there. So we could do it that way, or instead of worrying about getting it in the center perfectly, I just put the temple in, like you saw, take my clips off, move the quilt over, just so my block is within the stitching area on my grid. And then I'm just lining up my seams with the lines on the grid, just to make sure that everything's in there straight. Like I said, I'm not really worried about getting in the center. So all my grid marks, while well, my seams lap with my grid marks, and then so I'll just push down on the grid and help prevent the fabric or the quilt from shifting. And I'll clamp my clamps on the hoop. And like I said, I'm just using four. And I am using the slide on table. So it makes it really easy to give me a platform to work on when I'm pressing down. But you can see the hoop here. So now I can take my template out, slide it on out, and now I can come so you see my design on the screen, and what I'll do, I'll use absolute check, so I'll just select the bottom of my design, 
and then I can see where it's going to be in my square. So I purposely made my design a little bit smaller than my square, and the squares are all the same size. So I'll just really eyeball it. So I'll just move my design over, move it down, and once you've done a couple of them, you kind of know exactly where you need to line it up. And then you can just check the right side and see where it lines up here. Okay, let's check the left side. Okay, so I could probably move it over a hair to the right. You can check the top just to make sure. And of course, you can always move your needle down to see where it's going to hit. But I've done enough of them already that I know how far each side is going to be. So it looks like I could have moved over to the right just a hair. And that's it. So one thing I did change, so I could basically just start, but one thing I want to show you, one thing that I did change that I found that was very, very, very important is in the settings. So I went to my settings, I went to my embroidery settings, and then I changed the tie off. So the, the machines are naturally designed to kind of secure this thread in the beginning and the end. But what I find is when it secures it in the beginning, it causes a nest at the bottom, uh, on, on the, uh, underneath our quilt, the, bottom, the back side of our quilt, and it looks nasty every single time. No matter what I did, it just didn't turn out good. So what I've done now is I've come here and I turned off my beginning secure. I leave the bottom one on, the, um, the end secure on. So it won't secure at the beginning, it will just start stitching. But once it gets to the end of the design, it will, it will stop, secure the stitch, and then I can have it cut it if I wanted to, which I do have it set to. So I do turn off my beginning secure. I find that's extremely important. So now I can go back. So I've got my design. So what I do is I do needle down, and the machine will take a single stitch, and then I can pull, and it'll pull up my bobbin thread. So I've got my bottom thread and my top thread pulled up, and I start stitching. So what I absolutely love is, so I'm using the new Smart Drive technology module, which you might be able to see the logo over here. Um, this module stitches so much faster and so much smoother, so I can get these done in no time with almost no vibration from the machine to the module. It's absolutely amazing. But I'll show you again what we do. So like I'll take off this bottom clip, and then it makes it super easy for me to slide my template in. Then I can undo my other clips and I'm going to slide my quilt over, allowing me to stitch or gain access to my next block. And again, I just kind of move the quilt so the seams line up or are at least nice and parallel with my um, grid marks on my grid. Push down the grid and then I can clamp my quilt to my grid. I'm sorry, clamp my quilt to my hoop. And I'll actually take this out and then push down a little bit to resemble having that grid in there and then snap my fourth uh, clamp in. So I'm going to show you what the hoop looks like if you haven't seen it, but seen it in person. At least see it what looks like well, not in person, but on video, but see what it looks like once the actual quilt is hooped. So, so here you can see my quilting surface, and you can see the hoop. So it's a single hoop. There's not an inner and an outer hoop, it's just an outer hoop, which is nice because it cuts down on cost. That's all you really need. So you don't have to remove your hoop when repositioning the quilt, as you saw. You just slide the, unclip it and slide the quilt over. So it makes it really, really nice. Because over the years, we've always quilted with like our jumbo or our maxi hoop, but we always had to take the hoop off in order to reposition it. We had to unhoop it, which it worked, but it was a pain in the neck. But that's all we knew that got quilts nice and secure. And I'm throwing stuff. But now with the clamp hoop, the medium clamp hoop, 
we don't have to take it off, which is super, super, super nice. And what's really nice, well, well, I'm hoping at least, what's really nice is this is called the medium clamp hoop, the eight and a half, eight and a half. So hopefully next year after the university, so we're, let's talk about uh, late summer, early fall, that they'll come out with a large clamp hoop. So this was eight and a half, eight and a half. Hopefully they'll come out with one that's eight and a half by 16, which will allow us to do uh, borders really, really easy and really nice. So with this one, the biggest design we can make is essentially eight and a half inches. Um, but if we're trying to do borders, it's not going to be that easy. But it definitely can be done. But being able to do more, more length at any given time would be much nicer. But that's pretty much it. So what I can do, I can start another one. So, yep, so I've got my design, it that it finished. And so it's the right size that I want because all my squares are the same size. So I can just go to my edit screen and I can, I mean, I can go pinpoint placement. I can do all that, but there's really no need. I just use my absolute check. So I can check and see where that side is, where the top is. Looks good. So we'll pull up that bobbin thread. And we'll start. And that's it. That's all I really want to show you, which I, what I was working on. So when I finish, I'll show you what it looks like. So what I also want to show you is, so if in the beginning, I pull up my bobbin thread. So I want to show you what I do with this tail. So at the end, it cuts it for me. Um, and, let, and that's fine for what my project is. But so I've got the, this tail from when I first started. So what I want to do is I want to tie a knot, actually double knot, and I'm going to, if I had a self-threading needle within grabbing distance, I'll be using a self-threading needle, which are amazing. Um, but here I've just got a large eyelet needle that I usually use to sew on buttons. So I'm just going to thread these two threads through this large eyelet, this large eye needle. And then so I'm going to then bury the thread. So I'm basically going to go into the same hole that the threads came out of, push it through the layers of our quilt, and pull it back out. And then I'll trim over here. So what it's going to do is it's going to keep that knot nice and secure, and it's going to look pretty on the front and the back. So here we are. I finally finished and bound the um, little quilt that I was working on and the entire quilt was quilted using the embroidery machine. I was just using my 770 using the new, here it is, using the new snap hoop, clamp hoop, using the new clamp hoop uh, to quilt. So every little square has a quilting design in it. It's the same design. I didn't change it up at all because too many squares to have different designs in each square but using the clamp hoop made it super easy to quilt and then reposition and also the sashing is quilted in the embroidery machine sadly you can't see it you can't see it in the video even up close it's not super visible it doesn't pop out because i use the same color thread and that's fine i didn't really want to take away from the fabric at all but what i used in the quilting design i'm sorry the quilting that i used for the sashing is actually a decorative stitch that I just brought over into the on the embroidery side, enlarged to fit in this sashing perfectly, and I just quilted it along the edge. Um, and then in the outer border, I just used another Amanda Murphy quilting design, and I was able to just connect them as I moved the quilt um, along in the clamp hoop, and it came out awesome. The binding and everything's done. You can actually see my new Star Wars ironing board cover so you don't have to look at that ugly horrible ironing board cover that was on them before but I'll take, uh, bring you closer so you can see the detail in the quilting so here you can see all the quilting in each little square and I used uh, Omni by Superior Thread which is a polyester thread but looks very cottony we can see the quilting and it just looks marvelous now, one thing I want to point out, I don't know if I'll be able to explain this very easily, but if you notice, so here is the quilting design. So it starts here and it stops here. 
But so here's the other design, but it's only a partial design. So what you're able to do and what's so cool about the Bernina machine is so here is my quilting area. See if you can see it. So here's the grid that fits inside the clamp hoop. And this little dotted line is basically as far as the quilting can go before it's too close to the edge of the uh, hoop. So what I was able to do is I can line up the, it was the edge of my quilt because I still had some batting and backing, of course. So I lined up the edge of my quilt along that edge of the, um, the boundary of the hoop. And what it did is the machine quilted or embroidered up to that point and then it stopped. And then basically jumped to the next spot and continued quilting. So the embroidered design actually came out to right about here. But because this part of it was not in a safe area to embroider, it didn't embroider it. But the machine, being a Bernina, still allowed me to uh, embroider all of this. It just stopped at that boundary. So I was able to stitch this off the edge of my quilt. Well, actually right at the edge of the quilt and um, without any problems. So I didn't have to adjust the size of anything to make it fit or bring in software and cut it up is I was able to stitch it and it stopped all by itself along that edge and then continued on. It was so wonderful. So it just looked like I quilted off the edge. Um, but usually I, we don't have that much extra because I would need tons of extra uh, fabric backing and uh, batting in order to actually stitch this fully out. But here it stopped all by on its own which was amazing. And it did the same thing for the sashing, which you really can't see. But the quilting was amazing. And so this is um, some of the new Amanda Murphy um, embroidery quilting designs. I'm actually teaching a class on it in January, quilting on the hoop. But this whole video was to praise the new clamp hoop, which is so wonderful, especially the grid that comes with it. It sits nicely in there and it works like a charm. It's actually one of Bernina's least expensive hoops too. I'm dying for them to come out with a longer one so I can do longer borders uh, without having to rehoop it each time. All right, I just wanted to show you the finished product and as always, happy sewing.